The last topic in this chapter is relative motion and relative velocity. Quite often, we need to refer to the motion of an object relative to another object. Like here, this vector is the position vector for this car A. This is another position vector for car B. And this is for the displacement vector between them. RAB equals RAE minus RBE. So this is the relative vector. This is the relative vector. That's to say B relative to A or A relative to B, okay? This is how we calculate it from the original position vectors. If you are interested in the velocity, you divide by delta T, all these terms by delta T, so you will get another equation for the velocity, VAB as a vector equals V AE minus VBE. Okay, this is for the relative motion. Again, the strategy here, you need to label the objects. You need to write the relative velocities and write the equation similar to this equation and then solve for the unknown component. Check your understanding. Consider the following situations. A car slowing down at a stop sign. A ball being swung in a circle at constant speed. A vibrating string. The moon orbiting the earth. A skydiver falling at terminal speed. An astronaut in an orbiting space station a ball rolling down a hill, a person driving down a straight section of highway at constant speed with her foot on the accelerator, a molecule in the floor of the room. In which of these situations is the object accelerating? Before you answer, I'd like to remind you by acceleration. Acceleration means a change in the magnitude or direction of the velocity. The change in the magnitude can be an increase or a decrease. Okay? So examine these nine situations with this understanding and help me and help the class with your suggestions. This is seven. It's more than one, more than one. So let's start one by one. The first one, a car slowing down at a stop sign. Is there an acceleration there? I help you with this. Of course, there is a deceleration because the magnitude of the velocity will be decreasing. This is the only way to stop the car, right? So there is a negative acceleration that will change the velocity, the original velocity to zero when the car stops. So yes, this one has an acceleration in it. How about the second one? Any object that is moving in a circle the velocity will be changing direction. This is the only way for an object to move in a circle. If the velocity is changing direction, this is again an acceleration because acceleration either a change in direction or magnitude or both. So this is also, there is an acceleration, accelerated motion. A vibrating string. The string will be going back and forth. The velocity will be changing so yes, there is also acceleration there. The moon orbiting the Earth, again, this is a circular motion. All circular motions, the velocity will be changing direction. So there is an acceleration involved. A skydiver falling at terminal speed. 
terminal speed means constant speed means no acceleration right at this position you have the air resistance up equal to the gravitational attraction down and therefore the net acceleration is zero when the net acceleration is zero the speed will be constant which we call terminal speed so the, here there is no acceleration then an astronaut in an orbiting space station just like moon orbiting earth anything circular there is acceleration because the velocity changes its direction continuously a ball rolling down a hill rolling down a hill yes there is acceleration down the velocity will be increasing a person driving down a straight section of highway at constant speed constant speed like terminal speed no acceleration okay the last one a molecule in the floor of the room this is very much similar to the vibrating string the molecule will be dancing up and down and there is acceleration involved. A pendulum is released from rest at position A here and swings toward the vertical under the influence of gravity. So the pendulum will be swinging like this back and forth around the central position here. When at position B, which direction most nearly corresponds to the direction of the acceleration which direction mostly corresponds to the direction of the acceleration you are giving these eight numbers to use in your answer i can give you a tip The ball starts with the velocity going downward and in order to maintain circular motion, there will be centripetal force, centripetal action that will generate an acceleration going toward the center. In other words, the velocity will always have an acceleration going this way, perpendicular to its original direction. And as a result, it will deflect it will keep deflecting to keep deflecting and this way it moves in a circle so there is a component for the action along the radial and the magnitude of the velocity also changes the tangential velocity changes you start from zero value until you get maximum value for the velocity at this position so there are two components there are two things that changes the velocity the magnitude is changing tangent, the tangential direction here and you have the acceleration the radial acceleration to keep it in a circle so the net acceleration will be the resultant of this acceleration with the tangential acceleration which will be most likely going this way okay I have here a summary for situations so that you can read and understand. So at point B, the pendulum bob is both speeding up and changing direction. At that moment, its velocity points in the direction tangential to the circular path it follows, which is direction three. This is the tangential here. Because it is speeding up, the velocity increases. The acceleration must have a component that points in direction three, because it's increasing, the velocity is increasing its magnitude. Okay. Because it's traveling in a curved path, it must have an acceleration component that points toward the center of the curve, which we call the centripetal acceleration. So the direction one that would be the other acceleration thus the acceleration vector must point somewhere between one and three somewhere between one and three which is direction two any question about this problem
Very well. We are done with this chapter, and here a brief summary for the thing that we covered. Here in two dimensions, this is how we define the displacement, the average velocity, and the average acceleration vectors. And we decompose the motion into two independent motions, one along x with constant velocity and zero acceleration, one along y with constant acceleration equals to g, okay? And at any moment, we get the velocity simply applying the Pythagorean theorem, px squared plus v, y squared underneath square root will give us v, and the direction is determined by arc tan vy over vx. It's always helpful to remember this curve. Always helpful to remember that G is always constant, is always downward. Okay, it's always the maximum height, always Vy is zero. The third point, the last point, Vx is always constant. The same original value will not change. So the kinematic equations will have this form when we make use of these given conditions. For relative velocity, you need just to relate the vectors for describing the positions for two objects relative to each other. And from there, you get the velocity vectors. 